What's up guys, this is Kenska from KenskaArt.com, author and illustrator for Manga for Dummies and Figure Drawing for Dummies. And today, I got an awesome tool to share with you. It's called a Symmetry Tool. It gets a lot of bad rap from artists. They call it a cheat tool. Nothing can be further from the truth. I want to show you why. Let's get cracking. So part of the problems with ill perception of the Symmetry Tool is in part due to the way it's used in my opinion. So here I have a photo reference of this young lady. I'm going to use her as a reference. I have it on one layer and I'm going to create a second layer. And for those of you who are new to Clip Studio Paint or familiar with Photoshop, it works very similar to Photoshop. You can find the symmetrical tool on the ruler section. You're going to stray down to stay down to a symmetrical ruler. Click on that. On the separate layer, I'm going to roughly nail down where I think is her halfway mark. Now she's not completely facing forward, but that's okay. And of course you can use the object selection tool right here and you can move that line around to adjust uh, where you want that mark, the halfway mark to be. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and select my ink tool. Get a little bit closer up because I, my screen is, my screen size is very small, so the 13 HD. All right. And as you would suspect, expect all the markings that I make on one side will replicate itself on the other. Now what I, what I like about this, I like working on my left side, there's certain features of the face I like working on the left and there's certain features I like working starting on the right. So that I have best of both worlds. Okay. Now I know that this is not, that's not what her smile looks like, but that's not what the reason why we're using the symmetry tool, we're using it as a basic guide to get the landmarks that we want so we can go ahead and interpret the drawing. Okay, so this is, this is very quick, oops. And in fact, I'm speeding it up just a little bit because I want to show you where most people stop drawing and call it complete when it's not complete at all. Um, you know, especially if you're in a rush, you know, I get it. Got to turn in that deadline really quick. All right. Now, as you see, because of her position, she's not completely facing forward. Uh, if I had to guess, she's kind of a little bit, her body is turned a little bit three quarters and her quarters and her head is turned towards us. So that way you see the trap going around on a little bit of a curve there. I'm gonna turn off the photo layer, the reference layer. Now, some might say, hey, look, Ma, <laughs> I just did a character for you. Uh, uh, some people will stop there and yeah, I, I see it. You know, you got all the you got all the lines um, symmetrically there. It looks like a face, but so as you can see, the line quality is not that interesting. It's straightforward. The same with line width. The shapes are uh, a little bit clicheish because you see the repetition going on from the left and the right. So this is where I want to challenge people using the symmetry tool. And if you think uh, less of it, I also want to challenge to open your mind and give this a shot. This tool right here. Uh, yes, it works. Okay. This is um, something that not many people will uh, know about. What it does is it converts that line, converts your line drawing into a, a color. Uh, specifically in my case is we want to turn it it's like a non filter repro, repro blue say that again three times fast um, I'm gonna turn it back off and turn it back on it's not destructive you're not changing the actual physical line, the color of the line that would be under edit convert to drawing color we're not doing that so now we have our new guideline from which I'm going to create another layer 
And I'm going to keep that photo reference of that girl on a separate screen right here. So I'm going to drag her here. I don't really need her too much. I just need to remember some of the feelings I get from my first impressions of looking at the reference. I mean, that's what inspires. That's what references are supposed to do. They're supposed to inspire us to create awesome drawings, not for photo uh, copying. So now, now is a chance where you get to really, really work your stuff. If you haven't, um, taken advantage of this uh, view rotate tool, I strongly, strongly recommend you storing a shortcut of that into your uh, into your keyboard and keyboard shortcut. So you notice the nose is not what the reference has, but I wanna, I'm gonna take what I see based on this and what inspired me and then interpret it my way. When it's curls up, usually the eyes, the bottom of the eyes rise, right, uh, rises up just ever so slightly. I want to make that adjustment right now. Now this is the fun part. Okay, these both sides of the cheek were symmetrical, but now that I'm drawing them freehand, they're going to look a little bit different from each other, and that's going to give it its more organic feel. I'm going to add my little interpretation, making this cheek a little bit wider to show, to exaggerate that muscle twitch from her smirking. Sometimes I might try smirking myself just to figure out if I want to add something more to her eyebrows expression. Do I want to raise it more than what's in the photograph? I'm going to fix that shoulder. Turn it the other way actually, because I like how it adds to the body expression. This drawing is pretty much on its own. It's not a slave to the reference. It stands out by itself. I, already I can I can feel um, its own personality coming through. If you're like me, hair is always tough. So here you have the front part, goes down the widow's peak and the side. And you always are going to see, you can't see it from because it's cropped off, but you can always see that there's a top part of the, um, I'm sorry, the back plane of the head poking out. Sort of gives me room to make that edit. I'm gonna combine, what I love about hair is you can combine different strokes of patterns. And you don't have to use the same brush too. You can use a different kind of uh, 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 texture brush too. For now, I just want to get the, the lines to show the planes of the, the hair structure first. Then when I can get a little bit more crazy and creative, I want to use that. Here's the other plane of the hair. And as we get to the side, I want to start going from outside in. So for some reason, my hand just flows naturally that way. I'm able to get down, nail down the direction of the planes better. I don't know why. It's just, just how, that's how God created me.
going to lower just a little bit. Because I straighten her face a little bit here. In this, in this uh, photograph, she's ever so slightly has her head tilted down. Um, you know, I had to compensate by raising her nose a little bit up. Now, if you guys want to know what kind of brushes, where I get, where I get my brushes from, um, I'll have it listed below. There's always nice little wisps of wear coming down. Okay, you only want to take advantage of those. Definitely, definitely. That, that went from here, based on just tracing the drawing using the symmetry tool, to this. You, obviously, you want to train your fine motor skills to draw perfect ovals and perfect shapes, but after a certain point, you want to kind of set that aside a little bit and work on developing your line quality. You know, what kind of line qualities do you like to use? What kind of brushes? What do you? What kind of subjects do you like to draw? That starts to take should take more precedence as, as you develop as an artist. So all right, that's about it. all I have to say for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave your comments below in the comment section. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and leave, turn those comments on. And until then, in Christ's peace, bye. Ah, man, the bug just landed on my shoulder. Freaked me out.